And then worst thing about Skatopia, sometimes people um, blow parts of their legs off. This is Unplanned America, where you're invited to join Parv, Nick and me, Gonzo, as we flee Australia to road trip around the land of the free in search of the weird, wonderful, mysterious and sometimes scary unplanned side of America. In this episode, we collide head-on with two testosterone-fueled fringe-dwelling sports communities. First, we witness the passion and pain of the World Series of Beer Pong, and later we head to the explosive anarchist skater community known as Skatopia. I don't care anyone says, you can't play sober. Anyone who's sober is only gonna get nervous. It happens. From start to there is a big, and from there to being too drunk is literally this much of a gap. <laughs> if you can keep it between here, that's the best place to be in beer pong. We were in Las Vegas, Nevada, Sin City, where people from around the world came to try to win big on the tables. But we were here to battle it out on tables of a different kind against some of America's foremost bros for the World Series of Beer Pong. A simple game where the goal is to sink ping pong balls in your opponent's plastic cups while withstanding intense intimidation techniques. It's fucking over! Who gives a fuck? You're an asshole! Highly confident the team Unplanned America will get at least one cup. Well, we obviously sucked, so after bowing out early, we decided to chat to a few of the 600 young drunk men who had come from around the world to play for a whopping $50,000. Muhammad Ali said, if you can intimidate the individual before you're on the table, they're already done. I talk shit before you can get on the fucking table. They're so scared before I even play them. They're like, oh my God, we're playing Mark Reed. That guy won the World Series last year, bro. It's done. If I see him shaking before the game starts, it's over, bro. It's over. So yeah, tell us when you started playing. It was my buddy from home, Martin. We got an apartment together after college, and we we started playing. And for one year straight, we played pong every night. <laughs> <laughs> Former college athlete Billy Gaines is the passionate founder and CEO of this unlikely competition, and he told us about its history and the personal struggle of bringing it into the mainstream. This is the 10th anniversary of the event that we're at today. Can you just tell us a little bit about where it all began? Sure. Well, it started as a college game, um, and people, what it really was about was bringing people together, and that's, I think, that's why people were really playing the game. And we ripped this game out of the, the college drinking environment and basically created an experience that is almost something that can't even be described in words. We're down to 160 teams. We're at, uh, finals are going on right now, and stuff is starting to get really intense because there's $50,000 on the line. We are not going to tolerate this. We've had an excellent, excellent tournament. Please behave yourselves. Please behave yourselves. Let's go. So his partner just got arrested and thrown out, yet the game's continuing, and he's still playing. Is beer pong a legitimate sport, would you say? It gets a really bad rep because how drunk and loud everyone is. But if you think about it, one team wins. 299 teams go home with nothing. We're not getting paid millions of dollars now. But there are people dedicating their lives a lot. Myself included, I go out four nights a week just for beer pong, strictly playing beer pong. I'm not the one to say that it's a sport or not. It's a talent. If yeah. you're good, there's a skill involved. Oh! I want that big fake fucking check on my wall. Yeah. All we've ever done, we've come up to this. This is this is the Quamega of everything. It's the World Series. This is why we play every week of our lives. There's no other reason. There's no other reason. Seven years, whatever. Bring a ball in a cup, this is it. If you want to prove yourself, this is it. If you were to win the tournament, when you win the tournament. No, no. I'm going to propose to my girlfriend and ask her to marry me in front of her. Okay, now, wow, wait a bit of pressure on your teammate. If you imagine all the drunken spectators at a football match actually running down onto the pitch and being able to play, that's the sort of level of colour and intensity that goes on in here. 
the battle for the World Series of Beer Pong was well underway, and it was intense for competitors and spectators alike. One by one, the teams we had chatted to were bundled out of the tournament, falling victim to the unplanned America kiss of death. For Big Mark, this meant falling one game short of the final, while for Reith, this meant two wins short of a marriage proposal. It gets intense in there, right? But is there still camaraderie between you and the teams you play? Like, after you've seen that last ball... 100%. No, after you make last cup, we're all best friends. At the end of the day, I mean, I've met... 200 friends trying to win this goddamn tournament. <laughs> my best friend is my partner. Like, we met each other through beer pong now. Like, we live together, everything like that. Like, best friends for life. Like, that's my brother. You're playing, it's a lot of intensity, and you, you talk a lot of crap and stuff. But once the game is over, everybody's friends. That's the one great thing about it. I, I do it because I think I see how much it means to the people that come, creating, like, that goodness of these friendships is, is something that's hard to, it wouldn't be hard to give up. It's not really profitable right now. Even though we've been going for 10 years, everything we've been making, we put back in the company. And things are tight, they're fragile. And the only thing that's keeping this together is, is volunteers of friends and family. It's humbling that this many people would come to the event to begin with. It's humbling that I would further have people sometimes give up their vacation from work to come work to, for me for free to help support something that that they believe in, and, and furthermore, that they believe in me. And, and that's just, I, I can't thank them enough, and that's why I'm emotional about it. Please, please, please thank my staff. These are my friends, these are my family. A lot of my friends because of the beer bar community. There's, there's nothing I could ever do to thank them for what they're doing for me, so please help me thank them. Thank you. Though many would call the booze fueled beer pong a juvenile sport, if a sport at all, it was clear that it provided players and fans with the same feeling of passion and community as any mainstream sport. With all the emotion in the room, it was almost easy to forget that there was a final to be played. The final saw Texan team wet back wasted, taking on New Jersey's Pity the Fool, and it all came down to two shots. With Pity the Fool sinking their ball, wet back wasted had just one chance to level. And with that, the 2015 World Series of Beer Pong Champions were Pity the Fool. We're fucking proprietors of a new world. We want to build, build, build. We've already destroyed the planet, so we might as well build something here that's, that's here long after the people are gone. Our next slice of unique American life was found in the remote Appalachian mountain town of Rutland, Ohio. Our destination was the infamous backwards skateboarding mecca known as Skatopia, which we'd discovered via a pretty confronting independent documentary we'd seen online. People don't understand the problems with a skate park cult leader. I heard they steal people's keys and throw them out in the woods. They'll burn your car. Yeah! They'll beat you up. They'll make you skate. Welcome to hell! Who wants to burn their car? Now the time has come. The film made a frightening impression of a testosterone fueled party cult where mayhem, destruction, violence and anarchy had reigned for the past 20 years under the eye of unhinged skate Svengali, Bruce Martin and his wild son, Brandon. Needless to say, we were nervous as we approached the entrance. We're here. Far from the confrontation we expected on our arrival, we found the place to be calm and, dare I say, peaceful. We're the Australians. We're here to meet Bruce. Do you live here or? Yeah, I live here. This is his birthday today, isn't it? It is. Yeah, we got him a little present. Yeah, if you park right there in front of the bus, he's in the museum, I think. Thanks, bro. We braced ourselves to meet with a man who'd been arrested multiple times, including for assault. Luckily, Parv had brought a teddy bear as an offering for Bruce's birthday. Oh, yeah. All right, well, <laughs> uh, my mom's in here. Yeah, awesome. 
we were surprised to find the infamous Bruce just chilling in his museum full of meticulously organised vintage skateboards with his girlfriend Jill and mum, Pat. Pat. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Jill. Nice to meet you. As a backyard skateboarding trailblazer, Skatopia is Bruce's masterwork. Set up in 1996, the place has attracted thousands of skaters to its wild parties and is actually a home for a select handful who believe in Bruce's cause to create an anarchistic free society. When I bought this farm, there was just a little house and all of this was multi-floral roses. The name of my corporation is the CIA. Citizens Instigating Anarchy. We just live. Yep. And we try to make enough money to survive. Yep. And we're trying to get off of the grid. The 88-acre property is a grimy but well-constructed skater's paradise, comprising of five world-class skate bowls and ramps, all painstakingly built over the past 20 years under his uncompromising vision. So this was the first thing we built. We built this bowl. You'll see people skating it a lot later. There's a room over here that's got a stage. Every party dude, this is their dream come true, basically. Yeah, that's what my mom says. In order to build the structures and skate bowls that make up Skatopia, Bruce has surrounded himself with a small army of young skaters who work for him for free. Let's get a couple guys up here and let's get all this trash down here. Pick up all the cans in one and all the trash in the other. Hey, one of you guys should grab that broom. Go sweep all the water. We built this stage first. There used to be a mobile home behind it. And so people threw fireworks in it and it exploded. So do people live in all here? At different times. Yeah. This is the bowels of the devil. This is where we serve our food at. There's the pink palace. It must be 18. Stage for stripping only. <laughs> Some people find a home here and they feel really safe. And it's great. It's like a sanctuary from the outside it is. world. And then worst thing about Skatopia, sometimes people um, blow parts of their legs off. Sometimes people get hurt everywhere. Okay, it's not just here. This yeah. is my daughter singing with her band. <laughs> Be a star. How old is she? She's 10. <laughs> and this is my daughter with my, her 92-year-old great-grandmother. And she still serves meals on wheels to people. Wow. She's epic. And she called me today. Epic lady. This man's built a utopia. He's telling you to think for yourself. If you want the life that you want, then think for yourself and act on that. We don't have much time on this earth. If it's an uh, evening, it's tonight. Happy birthday, Bruce. If it's tonight, let's make the greatest night we can have. Let's, let's embrace the love that's around us. As the afternoon turned to night, the serene Skatopia turned wild as people came to party for Bruce's birthday. We've had over a thousand bands have played our stages, and we've had tens of thousands of skateboarders have come here. And some people come, come here and they stay and they never call their mom. And they, we, we really need to get that going. <laughs> He's gonna call her tomorrow. Yep. Your mom wants you warm, safe, and not here. He <laughs> wants me to think about my future. Yeah, well, I'll tell you exactly what I told his mom. He's a young man. He's got to go out there on his own and figure some things out. That's what life is about. You go in, you experiment, you find what you like, and you follow it more. And they think that this place is just party, 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 party. And the real reality of it is we're building bowls, we're building roads. We got things to do, we got deers to kill. We scrap, we learn, we live, and we give. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Well, oh, let's go to the hospital! Are you okay? 
We were in regional Ohio, the unlikely setting for the anarchist skater community Skatopia, run by legendary skater Bruce Martin and home to a group of creative misfits and a bunch of world-class bowls, all of which we were too lame to skate in. Here we go, drop doing the drop in. During that night's party, we found a few quiet moments amongst the madness to speak to some of the residents and friends of Skatopia about why this place is so important to them and what it's like to be part of this community. I don't have to worry about what's going to happen here because I feel safe, you know? I don't really worry about money so much. Like, I came here, I burnt my fucking car within like the two weeks of being here. <laughs> like, just not even worried about it, you know? You know, we were normal fucking jobs, nine to fives even, in cities that we hate, you know? Getting away, being able to fucking just be yourself, scream, eat shit, be a nut, rally a car, burn a car. When you lay eyes on this fucking thing, you just like are blown away and you can see and feel the blood, sweat, and tears, and love that goes into this place. It's a non-stop fucking hard-working place. You know, a lot of people think that this place is just a big party all the time, but if you think about it, there's a lot that goes into trying to maintain and build this place. Bruce's energy and Brandon's energy around, like, you just, you can't not work. Bruce just has that drive, that commitment to the dream. People line up around the block to follow the man. I hated everybody and everything around me for so long, but out here you can do what you want. You know, you got an idea, you want to build something, you want to create something, go ahead and do it. Freedom comes at a cost, so you have to handle your responsibilities. You know, you want to be warm this winter, you better get your ass out there and cut some firewood. When you're not paying the gas company, you gotta go cut down a tree. A lot of people would be like, whoa, that seems like uncomfortable, you know, but what's I, your... I mean, it's, it's uncomfortable, but it's something I can care about. I didn't really feel like I felt, you know, really belonged anywhere, like, so... I was like on heroin for like a bunch of years and like coke and all this, been to rehab a bunch of times and skating's the only real outlet that like I could channel all that in. Skating's the best high, you know? You could, you could define gravity almost, you know? And it's just, it's an amazing feeling. Like I've never felt at home anywhere else, but this place, they welcome you with open arms here. What is it about Bruce that makes all this possible? About Bruce? Yeah. He's fucking the man. He's uh. I don't know how he keeps this place going the way he does. It's it's amazing. First day here, he asked me to work in the rain. Didn't ask any questions. Fucking just went straight to work. Got a lot of respect for that guy. He uh he made all this possible. He wakes up in the morning like go 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 go, and he's got a mission, and he wants everyone involved. And you feel good when you're involved in his mission. Uh, and I think that's what draws a lot of people. Bruce's energy and leadership was even more amazing due to the fact that he had suffered an horrific injury just a few years ago. While inflating a truck tire with a high pressure pump, it violently exploded in his face, sending him three meters into the air and crushing his skull on a beam, causing him serious brain damage and altering his life forever. However, even this couldn't break his spirit and drive. That's the implant that they put in there. It's been amazingly hard, it's been difficult. I mean, I couldn't skateboard for two years. I couldn't even drop in on a ramp this tall. Um, it's, and I have so much of my self-esteem is built on skateboarding that uh, skateboarding and parenthood, it, uh, it really hurt me. My son, Brandon, you know, since I had my head injury, it, it, it's his place. Yep. He's in charge now. But, you know, Brandon's an amazing dude. We returned the following day to speak to the heir apparent, Brandon, another skater known for his intense style, just like his dad. Rereading uh, Plato right now, uh, you know, the complete works, spirituality, uh, neuroscience, you know, philosophy, uh, agriculture. Uh, <laughs> so tell us kinds. about the neuroscience angle. Obviously, you got interested in that because your dad had Yeah, that when I looked into that, I realized the damages that had been done through the left frontal lobe, which governs certain things. What he damaged was his care capacity in a way. He damaged the, the area that allowed him to see skatopia in the holistic terms for a long time. 
He used to be a very, very intelligent person. So stimulating his mind with philosophy or, or different holistic terms, attacking those sections that would make him fire those synapses properly. So I had to stimulate that as much as possible as his son and as the only person that could confront him without him getting to the point where he actually, you know, physically harmed me, you know, because that was the only person that could actually do that. He then gave us his deeply philosophical insights into the true vision and purpose of Skatopia. Anarchy doesn't actually mean chaos, violence, you know, going out and throwing a rock at a cop. No, that's not anarchy. Being self-sufficient, growing your own tomato instead of buying it from Walmart. Fuck that. I want to grow my own tomato. You know, that's what an anarchist does. He goes out and gets a seed and plants it and grows it. All these kids that come here think anarchy is burning a car, but they forget about the symbolic reference of the inner healing when you're actually separating from that item. Before you even had a choice to choose to buy a car, in America, you're already getting car toys and trucks, and you know, it's all over uh, the, the TV as commercials, in between your cartoon shows. You are built to be a slave to that brand before you even have a choice of it. And that's what this place is about, separating yourself from that, that idea, trying to be free to the best of your ability right now. Often kids try to rebel, and to rebel from their parents, they come to a place like this or, or yeah, do some yeah, of the yeah. things that are involved here. But you grew up here, this is normal for you. So what, what was it? Did you I rebel? rebelled from this place. Yeah, definitely, many times. I've done my traveling. I, kind of went to the professional side of skateboarding for a little bit and tried to experience that and tried to to go into mainstream like trying to get a job and stuff like that but it didn't work <laughs> i don't believe in that you know i i don't believe in in slavery you know i believe in the full potential of an individual's creativity and this place lets you harness that you can do whatever you want you can build you can do art as long as it's not causing harm you know you can come do it <laughs> you need money in a lot of circumstances so how, how do how does the community work together here well we get a lot of donations from sponsors to to actually help keep the place going and a lot of donations from individuals over the web the only times that we like to charge for the things here is when it's necessary to actually keep the place going for tomorrow for the next kid that wants to come here and live and build his own shack or or build his own mini ramp and learn how to do it because we want to teach them how to do that we want to teach children how to build things like this so they can take it home and build a place like this in their backyard there are different ways to actually live free. You can go out and build your own ramps with what you got. You can recycle bottles and, and build pyramids and igloos. And it's about your potential as an individual. This place is for you to come and experience a, a openness that the country doesn't really allow in other in uh, other places of the country. People are expected to behave in, in certain ways oh, yes. to not you know, uh, negatively impact other people. How does that work? We individually here co create the shared environment. When there's something going wrong, I individually step up and, and if there's somebody fighting, then I go and personally inter intersect and, you know, break it up. And if the person continues to act out of line or continues to, you know, be very harmful or, or immoral, you know, towards other people that come here and try to be peaceful and live here and, or experience the place for what it is, then yes, we, we will make you leave, you know? The little clips I saw before I came here was like, it seems like senseless violence. Yeah, But you're, exactly. you're speaking about it from a more philosophical yeah, standpoint. Yeah, and the, that's the 10% that is projected over the web. The 90% is just uh, individuals like myself and my father just trying to, you know, live here and, and love and, and grow and expand, you know? It's about people like you coming to experience it and figuring it out. Just touching that flame, you know? Seeing what it's really about. What it's all about is the dogs feel the freedom too, okay? <laughs> they yep. don't feel like they're restrained. They're feeling that freedom, by that that's for sure. constant tug and pulling of the leash, telling them they can't go there, they can't do this. Yeah. And that's what Skatopia is all about. That dog has two different colored eyes. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I think that there's a lot of people that are mainstreamed into capitalism, making money for someone, you know? And some, when someone starts making money off someone, they reward them and make them feel better about themselves through the rewards. When in reality, you know, it doesn't teach you about 
friendship and about family and about doing things that matter to you. You know, just being able to go spend money, it doesn't teach you the important things in life. People lived without money for thousands upon thousands of years, and they, there, was, there was no issues with money. They hunted. They fucking took baths in the creek or in the fucking river, and then we got civilized and destroyed the planet. <laughs> We're just trying to build something that inspires people to go build something themselves. What do you think is here that is missing outside? Believing what you're doing, seeing a dream and believing you can achieve it. It's step by step. And a lot of people don't realize one step at a time, you know, you walk before you run. I mean, it's pretty simple, you know? Life is about struggles. Without struggles, you can't know great achievements. You can't fucking feel the thrills of fucking massive existence. No matter if you're crippled or mentally handicapped, there's still stuff that can be found that you will rejoice in. And that's what life's about. And so many people will live life and they never figure out anything that excites them. And that's, that's the people we're looking for. We want to fucking enhance their life. And we're like, hey, try this. This is Katopia. Welcome home. No cash one, so I guess we can just tell them we're broke. Have they got like some cash aisle? Shut up and get on Tinder. Oh yeah, we need to uh Tinder! Alert, like it, everyone. Alert everyone that we're here. I'm not gonna follow you again. Remember the last time you got me stalked? Both of us stalked. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes people um blow parts of their legs off.